All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about sine, cosine, and tangent, and these are going to help us to get the components of vector, vector arrow representations. So remember, vectors are sets of numbers, and you can represent those by vectors that have a certain length and a certain direction. Here's an example of a vector, and if we wanted to know the horizontal and vertical components that is essentially asking for the length of this vector this blue one over here and the length of this vertical one right there and they make a right triangle so I'll put a little right triangle symbol now the fact that they make a right triangle allows us to use some ancient mathematics to find the lengths of those blue vectors okay it was discovered a long time ago that uh, if you have an angle, it doesn't really matter what triangle, what right triangle you draw that has that same angle. So here I have three overlapping right triangles that have the same left angle. All right, we'll call it triangle one, two, and three. If you measured let's call these vertical lengths A, uh, A, B, and C, and then let's call the, the horizontal lengths, let's call them D, E, and F, where F is the entire length, okay, and then let's call the diagonal, the hypotenuse, let's call that, how about X, Y, and Z, where again, Z goes across, is the entire the entire thing okay so again I have three overlapping right triangles and I would encourage you to do this exercise there is a lab PDF called displacement where you basically have a displacement vector like the red one and I, I ask you to draw overlapping triangles with like I just did there underneath the vector and actually with a ruler measure these ratios. So if you measured um, A over X and B over Y and C over Z, you would notice that they're always the same. It doesn't even matter. You could keep drawing more triangles and they, no matter what the size of the triangle, if they were overlapping in this way, these ratios would be the same. Um, D over X, E over X, Y and F over Z, these would all be the same as well, okay? And then finally, A over D and B over E and C over F, these would be the same, okay? So we're going to use the fact that the ratios are going to be the same for, um, for, 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 for different angles, we're going to use that to calculate the components easily. Okay, the, um, the these ratios right here, these are known as the sine ratios. The uh, d the this other circle right, these these are known as the cosine ratios, and then the other ones these are known as the tangent ratios. And people literally measured for you know one degree two degree three degree four degree five degree angles on and on and they they literally got a ruler and measured them and they had tables where they they gave you the values of all of these ratios for different angles now the angle of course that i'm talking about is right here so we'll call that theta there's the angle so you could draw for a bunch of different angles measure these ratios and save that in a book now nowadays your your calculator will give you the ratio so the calculator stores that effectively stores that table for you okay um, another way that you could measure the these ratios or another way you could remember them let me instead of calling them a b c d e f and x y z let me if i have an angle theta let me say that this length over here is the is this length is opposite to the angle so i'll, I'll call it o p p this one is adjacent so let me call it a d j and this is the hypotenuse okay 
Um, you could memorize this. I'll put this in the upper left. In fact, I would encourage you to memorize this. Um, the sine of an angle, if you have a triangle, it's the opposite side length divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent side length divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent, you'll notice, is the opposite divided by the adjacent. One last tool to help you memorize these is <clears throat> sine opposite hypotenuse. Those make the acronym SOH. Cosine adjacent hypotenuse, those make the acronym CAH. And then tangent TOA. Some people remember, they call it the Indian chant Sokotoa. Okay, Sokotoa is a, a way to, another way to help you memorize the sine, cosine, and tangent definitions. All right. So how are these useful to get the components? Okay, so let's go to a new page and discuss that. So if I had a vector here and I was looking for the lengths of these other two vectors, and let's say that the original vector had a length of 10. And let's say this was 25 degrees, okay? And I want to know what, let's call this one, um, <clears throat> how about A and B? So I'm looking for the lengths of the A and B vectors, okay? So the sine of 25 is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, so the length of B divided by 10. So that means that I can cross multiply and can you see that B is equal to 10 times the sine of 25? All right, so you can punch that into your calculator. Now, one word of warning, there's two angles, for, there's two ways of measuring angles. There's degrees and radians. So please don't make the mistake of not knowing which mode your calculator is in. So if your calculator is in degree mode and you type 10 sine 25 degrees, you should get 4.22, okay? If you don't, you're probably in radian mode. And then the cosine of 25 degrees is the adjacent length divided by the hypotenuse. So, um, whoops. So cross multiplication tells us that A is 10 cosine of 25 degrees. All right, um, punching that into your calculator will give, if you do it correctly, let's hope that I do it correctly, cosine of 25, I get 9.06. All right. Now, Tangent is also useful. The tangent is useful for the opposite situation. What if I knew the lengths of A and B and I wanted to know the angle? Okay, let's do an example of that. So let's say that this was five and then you figured out that these are three and four by measuring them, but you don't know what the angle is. Okay, or even let's say you didn't even know that the hypotenuse was had a length of five. Let's just say you didn't you didn't know the uh, you only knew the length of the components. Okay, make it even harder. Can we find the angle from only those? Okay. Yes, you can use the Pythagorean theorem and see that the hypotenuse the the that vector has a length five. But let's we don't even have to do that. Okay, so. Whatever the angle is, we know that the tangent of that angle is the opposite length divided by the adjacent length, right? So now we have an equation that we can solve for theta, okay? You can, you can get from here, you can use the arc tangent to get the value of the angle, okay? Your calculator may refer may have a button labeled tan with a minus one. Okay, that's the same thing. So you do the the inverse tangent, arc tangent, whatever you want to call it, 
and let's plug in 4 divided by 3 or 1.333 okay so that gives about 53.1 degrees now we are going to be using this so much these rules that I would highly advise you not only to memorize the Sokotoa the definitions of sine cosine and tangent but the way that I this procedure to get the components and the angle so I'll summarize it all on this page for you okay so this is this is extremely important stuff so sine opposite over hypotenuse you must memorize cosine adjacent over hypotenuse tangent opposite over adjacent and then if I have a triangle and I know that this has a length L and an angle theta this is going to be L sine theta is going to be the length of this side the product this is going to be L cosine theta okay if I have a different triangle where I don't know L and theta but rather I know let's say A and B okay then I would use the Pythagorean theorem to get the length of the hypotenuse and I would use the arc tangent to get the length of this angle 